So we have a little piece here that I uh, put in Magnificat Fugue by Johann Pachelbel, who wrote a lot more than just the canon. Now, what I want to talk about is a little discussion on voices. When this thing was put in, and I actually uh, scanned it in and then converted it to Music XML, when you do that, sometimes you don't get the voice uh, arrangement that you think you should have entering yourself, say, voice one, two, three, and four. So let's first do a few things to look at voices and how I can tell what I really have going here. For one, I can go to options and show and then turn on the colors. And when I do that, symbols and color here, you'll see that all the voices will come out in a different color. And that's really nice. It lets me see exactly what's going on. However, it doesn't tell me exactly what voice number these are doesn't mean that the voices are simply one, two, black is one, blue is two, red is three, and green is four. To really understand what the voice numbers are, I have to go to the right side here to my view that shows me the voices. Now, normally things default so that all voices are displayed as we have here. But if I want to, I can select the individual voices that I want displayed. So if I just want to see what voice one is doing, I can select that and all the other voices will gray out and I'll only see what's been written in voice one. And I can do the same thing for voice two, which is blue here. Voice three, which, oh, what happened to voice three? You know what? When it's read in, Music XML, for some reason, for the program that I used, it didn't use voice three in this piece. It actually set it to not voice four, but the bass stuff staff gets set to voice five and we've seen this in numerous cases before where people have written in and said i i can't hear my bass line and most often that's because when you look at your voices here you haven't set something for voice five six seven or eight especially voice five so green's voice five in this piece and it happens that red is voice six now that can come in handy, and it's vital when I want to set voices to instruments. But let's do something else here. Now that we know how to look at what our actual voices are, we'll go back and set things to display all. And we'll also set it back so that we show everything in black. There you go, what you'd expect to see from a real piece of music. So this thing was imported as, a, as an organ piece, um, but what if I want to split the voices out? I import some piano stuff or organ stuff, and I want to orchestrate it. I want to take the voices and split them so that, say, voice one is a treble instrument of some sort, maybe violins, voice two, second violins, voice three, violin, voice four, cello. Well, what's a simple way that I can do that? Well, let's go to our linear view and um, give ourselves a little room here, maybe expand things a bit. And what I'll do now is I'll add some tracks. So I'll go to track, insert track. Right. Now, it just so happened that I set the instrument of this thing to an omnisphere church organ. So for right now, let's just keep that. We can always change it later. What I'll do is I'll, I'll use existing instrument, omnisphere, done, and that'll add another track to my score. And let's see, let's just do that a few, a few more times. For example, existing instrument to tracks, insert track, existing instrument, and one more time, insert track, existing instrument. Okay, that's fine.
and if I want to uh, to bar all these things together, I don't like the way that it defaulted, I can just go to my bar line, select what I want, and then just grab it, and boom! That's a really nice feature. It, it gives me the bracket that I want. All right, so now that I have my four instruments defined and I can go and set them to uh, names that I want instead of track two, of course, I can set this and call it violin one, whatever I want to do. Set this to VLN one and then make sure that they're all shown. And then I can set my instruments up. I can then load in some other sample library on that. There are other videos to show you how to do that. But what we want to do is how can I extract individual lines from a multi-voice uh, piece and copy them into the new uh, voices that I've defined. So now if I want to copy in a part from the organ score to one of the tracks that I created, say I want to copy voice one to the violin one part, I'll make sure that my voice is selected. So I'll go to my voice one, because I want to only copy voice one, and the other voices will become inactive. I'll double click the first measure to select it, and then I'll shift uh, click to the end. To the ending point where I want to copy. In this case, I want to do the whole thing. Then I'll put that in my copy buffer, select where I want to paste it to, obviously at the beginning, and then I'll just paste it in. And there we go. We have everything copied in, or only the voice one part. Um, if I want to go in here, I see that it copied things in that were beamed in the direction of the initial part that I don't need anymore. I can just select that and do uh, shift control f to flip them around. There's, and uh, really nice and easy. And let's say I want to do the same thing on the, uh, uh, the second part. All right, so I'll come in and I'll create that. Oh, first what we want to do is activate the second part, not the first one. So now I'll do the same thing. Select the whole line and uh, put that in my copy buffer. I'll come up, oops, and uh, start at the beginning of the line, and paste that in, and it's smart enough to put the rest in where it there were no notes before, and then it just copies in the second voice. Of course, you can see, though, that second voice is copied in as voice two, the blue voice. What if I want to copy that in, however, as voice one? Well, what I can do is I go and select all my voices. Um, oops. Select all my voices. Um, and now... There's another operation I can use to basically move any voice to any other voice. So I'll select my line again. And now I don't want to copy it. What I want to go to notes and set whatever I've selected there to the voice that I want to move to. So that was voice two. Let's say I want all my a violin to be voice one since I might assign separate instances of a sample library to them. So I can select one there and hey, look at it turned it into the black, which I know is voice one. Uh, really easy. You can see uh, moving and copying voices around in Overture 5 is really simple and rather intuitive. And hopefully, that's just a, a little taste. As there's more complex things you can do. But those are some simple things that you should know to start off dealing with voices in Overture 5.